you know, from the first get go, like your character has so much. I don't know. There, there's there's so much weight on him. Like I, I want to know so much more about his history. Like how did how far did you go back into Thomas? I mean, just him on the boat alone. There was just there's a very quiet kind of determination about him that I love. Well, I didn't. I mean, I I can't really remember exactly how much I went back into him, but but the but the event, the traumatic sort of military event that 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 Thomas ends up kind of confessing or talking to the tribal leaders about, you know, was the the sort of the driving force, was the, um, I suppose, the very present um, experience that, that Thomas is kind of, he can't get away from, that he's, that he is carrying. And so really, you know, that was the prime mover. That was the thing that, that I guess is, is driving, um, Mr. Monroe, and you know, it's from that that he's then given this opportunity to, uh, at a sort of second chance at life, um, where he's, I guess, felt that he's heard a calling, and he ends up just taking this job on the other side of the world as a lay preacher, and hasn't perhaps been a man of God in any particular um, way prior, but you know, it, it's sort of the voice of God that has given him this opportunity so he kind of takes it and and ends up heading to the other side of the world a little in a daze a little you know he's he's got his bible he's now learning what he can learn he wants to do the job as well as he can because this is his survival now so you know and i think through the course of meeting the maori tribes that he meets and instantly getting into the sort of situations that he's in, he he really starts to see what's important, who's important, what's important about ourselves and our and our own internal um, uh, workings, I suppose. And and so this sort of raw man who's who's really, you know, wanting to be as honest as he can and be compassionate and um, it was a lovely, you know, character to play, obviously, if if not a little traumatized. Now, um, I actually know a couple of New Zealanders and they are the most pleasant people, happy in the world too. So for me to even think about the fact that tribes had problems back then, like it blows my mind too. Like, did you uh, get any history on, on how this worked? I mean, of course we, we deal with those things in, in any, any culture, but you know, what was the history that you learned that kind of went along with this? Well, I mean, I was learning little bits and pieces Constantly, I suppose. I mean, you know, what's interesting for, for for me, I guess, I was constantly comparing indigenous culture in New Zealand with indigenous culture in Australia, and on many levels, I think uh, the Maoris have have, did, for want of a better phrase, done better than than uh, the Aboriginals have in Australia. Um, you know, the percentage of Maoris versus Europeans is much higher in New Zealand than Aboriginals uh, in Australia. And I think, I think in a way, what, it, what really occurred to me was that because New Zealand's a much smaller country, when European settlement occurred, the Maoris were able to work together to defend themselves. Whereas because Australia is such a much larger continent, um, all the tribes were on some level isolated from each other, nomadic and easier to pick off as it were. So they weren't really, they weren't really as ready for the, for the European settlers as the Maoris were. Um, and they were different kind of fighters as well. And I feel like the thing that I've really learned is that, you know, even though things aren't, um, necessarily perfect for the indigenous folk in New Zealand, they 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 they're standing a better chance i think than than aboriginals in australia can you talk a little bit about thomas and him finding um answers in his religion or in the people he he meets like you know sometimes uh the word isn't enough or it's more than enough for some people uh, yeah i don't think he finds his answers in religion 
I think he I think he does to a degree. I think he's offered this job almost as a calling from God. I mean, we get the sense through the course of the film that he reached a point where he really thought there was nothing to live for. He's experienced a very traumatic event that he's responsible for to a degree in the military where innocent children have been killed. Um, and and he is traumatized by that and and thinks that and that that how can he ever get over this? How can he ever repay this debt? How can he ever um, get past this? And and we understand through the story that he tells that that he he just felt a calling from God to to, to take this opportunity to be a lay preacher and go to the other end of the world and 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 sort of and see and this was a sort of a lifeline i guess um and and so he takes this opportunity because that's all he has left and it's it is that opportunity i mean he's he's there to you know be the lay preacher of a of a european small european settlement um but really very quickly i think he feels far more connected to the ways of thinking of the of the maoris that he comes across than he does of the of the white folk that he's you know meant to be working for so you know of course he's he's utilizing his bible and um that's the work that he has to do but i think the true meaning for him the true uh gift in his evolution or in his sort of coming out as it were is through the connections he makes with people directly rather than this you know he doesn't find the answer in this in the word but it was just the word of god i suppose that got him there <laughs> you know so it's sort of an interesting turn of events as it were for sure now uh, was there any particular memorable days on this shoot because i mean at the beginning we see you give us a, a, you know a, a, a stunning eulogy on a boat that's going around and i'm like how do you hold your stomach and everything there but also once we get into the forest things can get a bit buggy and you know you want to <laughs> you know so as much as everyone you got you trust me I, i've talked to you know australian forest people in australian forest and then new zealand so i know things happen a lot all the time so nature it can be fun uh, or yeah i'm 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 you know I, i've been brought up in the australian bush and the australian forest so i felt like the new zealand one felt pretty safe to me <laughs> to be honest the 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 rocking of the boat though there was one day when we filmed out at sea and we had about a three hour you know schlep back to shore and it got really rough during that time and i got really sick i'm really sensitive to to um motion sickness and so that was horrible and i felt it for about 72 hours afterwards so that the next day or two i was really you know so that was a memorable afternoon we weren't even rolling camera but of course i think the the horse ride uh you know coming out in that water and and riding on the beach i think just from a visual point of view was a fairly memorable uh moment but look every day working with those maori actors and and being sort of blessed by them each morning before we filmed and um i just felt like i was taken i was welcomed into a into a world that i didn't know and i felt really honored and so the whole thing was very profound and and moving and very special you know my father was from new zealand as well and his last remaining sister passed away the day that i arrived so so i didn't get to see her and that's set the whole thing off in on a very emotional level for me um so you know getting to work with lee tomahori and we talked about working together for 25 years so there was a lot going on in the making of this film for me that that has made it e e extremely memorable um and you know every day felt pretty special working with teori ori melbourne the young actress who is the lead in the film was just Oh, she's so wonderful. She's such a delight. And and she said to me early on, she said, um, all right, so you've done a lot of films, eh? And I went, yeah, I've done a lot. She said, so I suppose I'm going to learn something off you, am I? And I went, not necessarily. I, 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 don't, I don't know, maybe not. And she said, yeah, maybe not. Maybe you'll learn something from me. And I just went, 
Yeah, I reckon you're right, love. <laughs> I reckon you're right. <laughs> so just even that, even that little moment, I just thought, oh, she has such a great confidence and a but a joyful kind of perspective on the world. And she was great fun to work with and really kept my feet on the ground, you know. Fantastic. Well, absolutely beautiful film. Uh, direction was amazing. You did great, too. So I can't wait to talk about this with everyone else. Um, and I guess the next time you are seasick, um, act like you're not. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that's, I feel like that's what she would have told you. She would have told you, just act like you're not sick or something, you know, yeah, and just kind of go from there. <laughs> well, I thank you very much. Hope everyone in your world is happy and healthy and have a great day. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Good to talk to you.